This is your Barbados Today Evening News update for Thursday, November 15. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernilla Wedderburn. Principal of the Grantley Adams Memorial School, Valdez Francis, has reached out to parents as disgruntled students continued to vent their concerns about canteen services offered at the school. For the fourth straight day, students insisted that they could not eat the food because it was not tasty and too expensive. School authorities did not speak to the media. But in a letter to parents dated Wednesday, November 14, Francis urged parents and guardians to remind their children that they were not permitted to leave the school premises without permission during the school day. He also called on parents to advise their children against taking packages over the school fence, saying it could create safety and security risks. Principal Francis added that children were free to bring their lunch to school or purchase food from the school canteen. Yesterday, education officials, including Acting Education Minister Lucille Moore, met with the principal to discuss the matter. It is still not clear what came out of that meeting. Three teenagers and a 20-year-old man accused of the murder of bread vendor Hayden Mayers on November 8 have been remanded to HMP Dodds until December 13. 18-year-old Romario Hobbs Daisley of Trainmore Lane, Bushel St. Michael, Rashawn Akim Sealy, also 18, of 2nd Avenue, Allen's Land, Bushel St. Michael, 17-year-old Wayne Ricardo Bryan of School Lane, Halls Road, St. Michael, and 20-year-old Kishma Isaka Omar Young of Chase Gap, Halls Road, St. Michael, all appeared before acting magistrate Sandra Rollins this afternoon. The four were also charged with three counts of robbery. They were not required to plead to the indictable charges. Check fraud and scheming are still major concerns for banking and law enforcement officials in Barbados. Word of this today from Chairman of the Barbados Bankers Association Anti-Fraud Committee, Sheldon Lane, who was speaking on the sidelines of the annual fraud conference of the Institute of Internal Auditors, the Barbados chapter. He says these problems are still commonplace and consumers must be vigilant. We're talking about the trends of fraud in Barbados in the financial services sector. And one of the things that we've been seeing is a increase in the number of check frauds that we're seeing across the, the island, as well as uh, you would have noticed in the media in the several years um, past, uh, we've seen also increase in skimming. That has died down now in, in 2018. Uh, but they, that is still cause for concern uh, where the fraudsters are compromising the ATM machines um, by inserting skimmers to steal the uh, information of customers. Uh, so that's something that we need to be concerned about. Uh, we can't stress enough the importance of customer education, ensuring that customers, uh, when they go to use the ATMs, that they protect their pins, uh, be aware of their surroundings, uh, select the appropriate ATMs uh, when they're going to use them at night and so on. Uh, not accepting uh, help from persons that they don't know uh, who may be just there to show the surf and steal their pin. Poverty levels in Barbados have increased over the last two decades despite improvements in the overall standard of living. Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Church for Barbados, Jason Gordon, made this point last evening while speaking at a discussion entitled Our Collective Responsibility to Respond to the Cries of the Poor. He stated that between 1996 and 2010, the rate of poverty in Barbados had risen from 14% to 19%, with women taking the brunt of the burden. He, however, said that the church has been taking steps to empower people who may find themselves suddenly thrust into this predicament with a hub called People Helping People, which it established after the previous Frontal Stewart administration laid off 3,500 government workers in 2013. We saw the goal not as giving a, a bag of food, which we will also do, but as helping people to retool themselves to find skills and to move themselves from one step to the next step to the next step until we move them from dependency to independence and from independence to interdependence where they can participate in the life and growth of the society. 
The island's newest centenarian, Everdeen Yard, celebrated her milestone today in fine style with family, friends and Governor General Dame Sandra Mason. The jovial but soft-spoken Yard, who lives at the Love and Care Nursing Home, was described by her niece, Griselda Evans, as a wonderful woman. She's a very loving giving. Um, you can call on Miss Yard to pray anytime, to start worship and then she will do it. She loves courts, the same courses. When you give her lunch, whatsoever you give her, you want some from here? Yes. Yeah. She's very, very nice. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news, police in Trinidad and Tobago report an alarming rise in crimes against children over the last year, and this year's figures have not improved. According to the Child Protection Unit of the Police Service, there are three reports of crimes against a child every day. More in this report from CCN TV6. The Child Protection Unit of the TTPS says sexual penetration and sexual touching against children continue to be the most prevalent reports for which several persons are now before the courts. It's an increase of 59% for the current period. For the same period, there were 121 reports of sexual touching in 2017 and 217 reports for 2018 representing a 79% increase for the current period. Adding that there has been an exponential increase compared to last year. Overall, there have been 584 reports of serious crimes against children in 2017 and 926 reports of serious crimes against children in 2018. This figure reflects an increase of 59% in the current year. Of these reports, there are 350 matters, sorry, 353 matters currently before the court. To international news now, British Prime Minister Theresa May vows to see through her Brexit deal saying it delivers what the people voted for. After several cabinet ministers today resigned and discussions of a vote of no confidence was triggered by Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Prime Minister says she is sorry colleagues have left the government but believes what she's doing is right. I do not judge harshly those of my colleagues who seek to do the same but who reach a different conclusion. They must do what they believe to be right just as I do. I'm sorry that they've chosen to leave the government, and I thank them for their service. But I believe with every fibre of my being that the course I have set out is the right one for our country and all our people. From the very beginning, I have known what I wanted to deliver for the British people, to honour their vote in the referendum. Yes, difficult and sometimes uncomfortable decisions have had to be made. I understand fully that there are some who are unhappy with those compromises, but this deal delivers what people voted for and it is in the national interest. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bv. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in both terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.